All right, Jamie. Mm -hmm. Jamie, uh, where'd you grow up? Where, where are you from originally? Um, originally, I grew up in uh, Quito. It is a little town outside of Millington. In Tennessee? Tennessee. And tell me about your childhood. You had both your parents when you were young? Um, half and half. Had a really rough childhood. Really, really rough childhood. Um, but I excelled. Um, I was top of my class, smartest, for um, kindergarten on up until um, I started dating a guy that was way older than me. Very abusive and I was scared to go to school. So I went um, and got my GED a little bit early when I was 16 and um, took some tests. Got to go do a little bit of college, nursing school. Um, then uh, got busted for prescription fraud, uh, but already had a full-blown addiction to pain pills because of a car wreck. Um, and it just kind of escalated from there. You know, um, pain pills, your body builds up a tolerance. Constantly, constantly, constantly. And um, I'm at the point now where I'm doing massive amounts of fentanyl and um, it, it's starting to not work. So I don't know what my next um, plan of action is other than having to quit. After fentanyl, there's not much left to do, is there? Mm -mm. The profanol that Michael Jackson died off of, but you're not going to find a doctor to monitor that, yeah. you know. And so, you're also smoking crack? I do. I smoke crack um, to balance out the, um, you know, the nod and the sleepiness. I also um, do Xanax, have severe high anxiety. Um, I've had several attempts in my life. I was stabbed in the back twice, which resulted in two open heart surgeries, and I have a pacemaker. Um, Christmas time last year, uh, I uncovered a killer that was killing girls around the neighborhood, and uh, he tried to kill me kicked me until I had eight broken ribs, my liver was split in three places, my spleen was busted and my stomach was busted. I was dying. Um, they airlifted me to the med, cut me from here to here, and um, left me open, packed my insides for six days, closed me up. Um, the minute I woke up from surgery, they couldn't give me enough pain medicine in the hospital so I AMA'd myself. What is that? AMA against medical advice. Oh, I uh, up and left, directly after surgery. <laughs> That's insane. So, so let's go back to your childhood. Was, mm -hmm. What was your childhood like? Was there any abuse or anything like that going on? Uh, there was alcoholism in my family. There was abuse, mentally and physical. Um, a parent was removed from the home. And uh, when that happened, a divorce happened, and the other parent went a little bit buck wild. So I had two brothers and a sister that were younger. I cared for them as much as possible. My mom would come and give us money, you know, pay the bills, but pretty much it was a free-for-all party house at my house. We had a acre big racetrack for dirt bikes in my backyard and also a uh, racetrack for BMX bikes. Um, our house was the spot to hang out, mm -hmm. you know, for all the teenagers in Tipton County. Um, so I, I started selling drugs, um, you know, whatever I could get my hands on. I did really well until, like I said, um, I, was, I was busted for prescription fraud. Um, and I, I had actually got pretty far in my nursing degree. Um, screwed that all up. Um, I also have uh, had charges of counterfeit money, making counterfeit money, facilitating a counterfeit enterprise. Uh, 
$187,000 worth of $100 bills, counterfeit. Um, my husband signed indictments, affidavits on me. I divorced him. Uh, they had no major proof, so um, they had to drop it way, way down to paraphernalia of, you know, um, counterfeit materials. So, did a little bit more jail time, and um, but so that's my. Uh, it's a little bit of my background. Um, I learned early on uh, there was. Um, um, sexual abuse, not from my mom or my dad, but from a, a man my mom chose to be with. And um, there, were, there was massive abuse there. Um, How old were you? Uh, from what I can gather, and from what people tell me, I was probably four when the grooming started. And uh, I remember I was, um, I was 14, uh, I, not quite 40, it was like two weeks before my 14th birthday when um, the actual penetration happened. And uh, so it, it screws up your your sexual mentality it it really does it it twists your mind into thinking that um that that's all men want and then that's how you get them you know and it it made me feel like i wasn't worth you know um anything and i was uh, one of the top softball players at my school like I said, I was um, one, I had one of the highest GPAs. Uh, if I would have not gotten my GED and finished until 12th grade, I probably would have gotten a uh, historian of my class. Um, I was student council president from 6th grade to 10th grade. Hmm. Uh, regardless of anything that, you know, went on in my home life. Uh, I still excelled in that in those things. Um, I loved working. I'm an extremist. Whatever I do, I do. I'm I'm the best at what I do. No matter if it's selling drugs, selling pussy, selling whatever. I um, I try to to be the best at it, and um, and I am most of the time. But. Uh, so does, does this life get, get you down sometimes? You get depressed? Oh, yeah. It must, yeah. right? It must, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, it, it must be difficult for a woman to do this kind of work without being high or drunk or something. Oh, yeah. Almost impossible. Yeah. Um, because um, men degrade you. Not all of them, but a lot of them. Um, I'm, I'm a... Um, a fetish fantasy girl. I do a lot of fetish fantasy work and a lot of men have um, some pretty serious fetishes. You know, um, some of them want you to uh, to act like their daughter, you know, have daddy-daughter sex. Some of them want, um, want to rape you, you know, They'll come in and act like they're going, they're raping you, and then at the end they'll pay you. But you know, it, it's. But in in a week's time, I'm I'm probably raped four times a week. Um, you become detached. What's, what's the hardest part of this? Do what? what? What is the hardest part of this life for you? The fear of not seeing my kids again, of dying and not seeing my kids again. Did that 
one trick who tried to kill you? Is that what kind of put this fear in you? Or I mean, I the, the, fear the, the fear is before. always there, isn't it? Do you know what um, Do you know what a, a necrophiliac is? Somebody who likes having sex with dead people. Yeah. Uh, for a long time, I had a necrophiliac hot on my trail, wanting to, um, you know, um, <laughs> he wanted to to have sex with me. I dealt with that. Um, Extremely terrifying. Um, from from what I gather, he's no longer in the picture. Um, it's a hard knock life out here. <laughs> um, this must be far from the life that you dreamed about as a kid, right? Far from it. I wanted to be a lawyer or a veterinarian. And now with your addictions, it seems very unlikely that you'll get out, right? I could still be a lawyer. I, I have enough school under my belt that I yeah. could still... No, anything is possible. You know. Fentanyl is um, a tough drug to crack. It is. Tough addiction. I had actually... Um, overcome it uh, and relapsed. So... What, what do you think the the core of all your self-destructive behaviors is? Family. No family support. Yeah. Um, the people that do make it have family support. I have a huge family, um, but no support. It's like, oh my gosh, you know, they smoke weed and drink, take little pills, you know, but oh my gosh, hair and foot and fit and all, we can't be a part of that. So you're disowned, you know, and 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 I know you don't get clean for your family, but when you have the people that you love surrounding you, encouraging you, it makes a big difference. Mm -hmm. And and also having a home to go back to. I can't go back to my childhood home. I'm not allowed. So <clears throat> I have to do what I have to do to to put a roof over my head. Do you find the requests you get from your customers gets a little extreme? Sometimes. It's beyond what you're comfortable doing? Sometimes. Sometimes they ask um, for bestiality. Do you know what that is? They, yeah. want, they want you to have sex with one of their animals. Right. Uh, absolutely not. Some want to, um, to get four or five people and and beat you and rape you, but they offer a thousand a piece. But you know that's that's out of the question. Um, there, there's a lot of um, some want you to shit in their mouth. You know, that's not something that I'm into. Um, people have um, fetishes that I don't really see how they um, they come about them, you know? I know how I came about my fetishes. I have fetishes. Um, I, I like to be dominated. I like to be tied up. Mm, you know, um, I'm one of those. <laughs> um, I like toys. I like Minor amount of pain. Um, you know, my, my sexual um, preferences, or uh, I don't know what you would call it, my sexual orientation or whatever, it isn't exactly, exactly healthy, as a doctor would put it.
or whatever, but it works for me, you know? So, um, I also, uh, don't know whether I like men or women more. My last relationship was, uh, with a woman, a girl named Christy, and, um, she died three months ago. I'm sorry. Um, that was hard. You know, um, the hardest part about all of this is is watching everyone you know around you die. Because that's what happens. Jails, institu- institutions, or death. That's, that's the end of this road. And um, even having the knowledge of that, we still do it. The fentanyl, the heroin, I've been addicted to every drug and was able to overcome it. The fentanyl and the heroin, it, it's a whole, whole nother level. It changes the chemical makeup of your body. Um, it's absolute, the, your, your biggest fear then becomes being sick off of, you know, not having those drugs. That's your biggest fear. You would rather die. Yeah, I've heard that. Than, um, you know, go through that uh, sickness. So, um, you know, but, and, and then people get through it, but your body never really recovers. So you think, well, I'm just going to try it again and one time and you're hooked again. Yeah. It's a never ending cycle. Who's raising your children? Um, well, my son is old enough to, you know, um, he moved up to Missouri with his father finally um, and they're doing really good building a relationship. Uh, my daughter has always lived with her with her dad. My my children have different dads. Mm-hmm. And um when me and um uh, my little girl's father split up, she uh he took her and I took him. And um off and on he's had to go live with his granny and my mom when I've had to go to jail and stuff, but um when he uh when he really lo- left me um for a little while because he wanted to go to Dallas with his granny and try something new it um my addiction really soared that's when it got really bad um he came back I slowed down a lot but um he was older he's bigger than me and um had a lot of anger and a lot of um he wanted to fight me a lot and um, couldn't fight him. So uh, he's with his dad in Missouri now. Uh, from what I hear, they're doing good. He's almost 18, he's working. So um, that makes me really happy. Uh, wherever my kids are, as long as they're safe and happy and protected, that's what, that's what matters to me. You know, I'll sacrifice my feelings in my heart so that they're safe and well taken care of. And what's your biggest regret? My biggest regret was um, going to see Dr. and um, getting on pain medicine. Because before that, I I really didn't do drugs. I didn't even smoke a cigarette. And um, when I got on those pain pills, prescription, I thought prescription, and they're okay. He wrote me, he was a a script writer, he wrote me um, Opana. I don't know if you know what that is. It's oxymorphone, they give it to to dying people. Um, Percocet, Lortab, Xanax, Valium, Fentanyl, I got all that a month in one month, and um, 
that's my biggest regret. I feel like if I never went to him, then I I never would have, you know, gotten a pill addiction. And that's what started it. Because once you're addicted to pills, your body becomes dependent. And so... What's been the most important lesson you've learned? This way of life, drugs, all of this, um, nobody's above it. It can happen to anybody, the best of us, the smartest of us. Um, it happens very quickly. Uh, and and that's I guess that's it that you know nobody's immune to it nobody you get an addiction your morals change and um, until rape is a normal part of your of your life <laughs> All right, Jamie, thank you so much for sharing your story. You're welcome. I wish you the best of luck with it. Thank you. Thank getting, you. Out, getting out of this street life. Thank you. And addiction. Thank you.